Hey guys, Ed here. I'll be covering today's Wednesday widget, which is DIY CNC turret lathe part two. We're building this as a dedicated machine that will turn, assemble, and package these magnetic plugs for our fixture plates. In this part, we'll be machining the tail end of the bed, the tailstock risers, and the X cross slide plate, as well as truing up all of the mounting surfaces for the linear rails using the painter's tape and super glue work holding trick. Also, first video showing machining on our Beta 1100MX. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. In widget 202, we started on the first few pieces of the bed of this machine. Card to that video here as well as the current F3D file. First, let's get that bed finished up. All we have left to make on that is this tail end plate, which will support the tail stock. Spotting all of our drill holes with tool 25 and drilling clearance holes for quarter 20 hardware. Then pre-drilling the M3 tapped holes, which will be used to fasten the X axis linear rails to the bed. Since we were drilling so far away from the mod vise, figured it'd be a good idea to give some extra support with some one inch parallels. Then a single 3D adaptive tool path using our favorite three flute variable flute quarter inch end mill from Lakeshore Carbide to clean up the saw cut edges as well as rough out these quarter 20 counter bores. Then same tool coming back with a contour for a finishing pass. Finishing up with our 3 8 four flute Lakeshore Carbide chamfer mill. I love this thing. Now when we first showed this, a few of you pointed out quite correctly that we should machine any mounting surfaces for linear rails, but I wanted to wait to do that until we had the entire base assembled. That way I could deck it off in one setup and have a better chance of keeping everything coplanar. Failing to do this could result in binding of your linear rails, premature wear, inaccuracy of the machine, just all kind of nasties we want to avoid. In the spirit of doing everything right proper like, I wanted to use a no stress work holding method. So, you guessed it, painter's tape, super glue. I think this is especially perfect for this application here where you want to hold something securely but not use any potentially torsional clamping force. Card here for the full video on this technique, as well as a link to our latest tape, glue, etc. we like to use. I'm using a healthy amount of thick super glue here for its gap filling abilities and plenty of accelerator to make sure it kicks quickly and thoroughly. And it never hurts to go over once more with some accelerator just to cure up any remaining glue. I'm jog feeding here. Pretty close to our standard Superfly recipe, 2500 RPM around 20 inches a minute. Just trying to take off the minimum amount to clean up. On to the two nearly identical tailstock riser rails, the first public chips off of our Beta Frankenstein 1100MX. A treat especial, if you will. I've been running the shear hogs pretty hard here lately on both the 770 and the 1100MX. In this case, we're maxing out the machine's spindle speed at 7500 RPM, feeding at 8 thou per tooth, 150 thou optimal load, and 400 thou maximum roughing step down. Increase depth of cut so you can utilize more of that sharp carbide you're paying for. Then coming in again with the quarter inch three flute 3D adaptive to finish roughing out this radius and these quarter 20 counter bores.
Since the bottom is a mating surface, we'll want to make sure we face that off. Then spot and drill our number seven holes for the quarter 20 mounting hardware. And while we're at it, a quick chamfer. Now we're to the point where we can do a little more assembly. So let's go ahead and attach these tailstock riser rails, then go back to the machine and deck those two coplanar and flat. Lastly, let's do the X cross slide plate. This much overhang off the sides of the vise with a thin part like this would surely chatter when facing, so I went ahead and preemptively shoved some hockey pucks underneath there just to keep things damped. Standard facing recipe. Then spotting a bajillion holes here. So in Fusion, under the geometry tab, I went with diameter range 0 to 0 0.5 and it caught everything I wanted to spot, which is awesome. Now in the center of this plate, we have a large rectangular hole for chip evacuation. Probably going to go with a vacuum directly hooked up here to really keep things clean. So we'll come in once more with the quarter inch three flute end mill and a 3D adaptive toolpath to clear out the bulk of this hole, as well as take care of this extra material along the saw cut edges before finishing up the profile with contour. Lastly for this op, we'll throw a chamfer on it, then flip the part, face, and chamfer again. In our next installment for this project, we'll get into what I think are some more interesting and complex parts of the machine, a lot of small brackets, and we'll start to work on the ratcheting index mechanism for the turret, which we're really excited to see start to come together. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.